Yes, so as you can see here, we have access to the newest beta version of the Legion Space. It's completely new and completely different, honestly, from the old version. Uh, first, I do have a bone to pick, and there's a reason why you should never honestly update to this update, in my opinion. Even when it comes out to full, whatever, public release with all the bug fixes applied. There's one egregious sin here, and it's highlighted right here out in the middle, and if you don't see it, and it doesn't obviously smack you in the face, then I'm sorry to you, but uh, unfortunately, we no longer have our power saving G, we just have power saving I will never personally use this in my personal time, and I'm going to immediately delete it off my device after this video. Sorry, Lenovo. Now, with that out of the way and my personal biases aside, we can see that in the store we actually do have a nice beautiful kind of layout. Even though it does automatically launch into the store, it does feel snappy. And you can see that going through the tabs of the featured games that they have, it, there's no delay going through it. And even with the ones that have videos for Dragon Ball Z and Elden Ring here, you can see when going back and forth between those, there's really no delay. There's no pixelation. There's no lag to the system. Going down to PC games and cloud gaming will just bring you to the respective sites on Microsoft. Now going through here, it'll show highlighted uh, VIP sales or any deals that they have, anything that they're feeling like promoting that particular day. A lot of people I'm sure are not going to enjoy the fact that it automatically launches into the store page, but hey, at least it's nice and snappy and it looks pretty cool in my opinion. Now, going over to my page, we can see there's order center, switch accounts, logout, download center, help center, and online support, as well as screenshots. So for the order center, you can see if you do ever buy anything from that store, you'll find them through here and the CD keys and everything in respective stores that they belong to, as well as you can contact customer support if you need any help with that. Switching accounts will actually log you out of the Legion account and you can switch over to a different one or just straight up log out of this one. Uh, download setters, that's where you're going to find the games that you bought. Now, going over to library, it's a nice, clean, simple UI in my opinion. We have a nice refresh add game system here. It will pull installed apps, but it won't automatically register apps it knows not to be games to here. Although some games it might not find, like Diablo 4 here, so I would have to register that manually, but at least it's already in a quick select thing. And if you don't find it here, you can add the games from a local path down below. Going over to a gamer's platform, we can see that you can open and download their respective game stores here, such as Xbox, Epic Game Store, and Steam. Now, going down to the options menu, you can see that you can open uninstalled games there. And if you do add manual shortcuts here, you will be able to delete them through this menu as well. Unfortunately, we're not able to customize our artwork, even on custom added links. Uh, it will just show the default splash screen for Epic Game Store games all the time, unfortunately. So it will become a bit of a mess to find them if you do have a lot of those titles on those stores. Hopefully in the future, something can be done about either adding your own or finding new sources to pull these images from. Moving to the settings tab, this is where kind of the biggest differences are found, as well as a controllers tab later on, in my opinion. So you can see here, there's beautiful new graphics showing the fan, CPU, and GPU usage, as well as FPS limiters and VRAM and RAM usage. Now you can see there's five tabs, performance display, audio discs, and drives. Display, I can't show off on the capture card because there's a bug where if you try to open this display, presumably because it's not seeing the Legion display, it's seeing the external display, it will actually crash Legion space. Again, I can't emphasize enough that this is beta, closed access not public software it's not meant for public use it is coming along quickly which is nice and there is a lot of overhead changes and kind of behind the scene changes to this as well and it, again it just can't be emphasized enough of how snappy this is even with all these things kind of going on so going to our performance tab we can see that like before we have our performance power saving g custom one and two quiet balance performance and custom settings here for thermal mode if you go to your custom you can change your tdp settings like before uh, you can change it through all the way down to 5 to 30 watts. You can customize your fan speed as well in your custom modes, but you can't change them in the default setting modes. Moving down to the bottom, we can see here that if you want to enable your FPS limiter, you can enable it through 30 to 144 and change your OS power modes. Moving to the display tab, I'll show external capture of this. However, this is where you're able to change your brightness settings and things like that. And it'll look very similar to the audio tab shown on screen now. So going to the audio tab, you will see that there's volume control and microphone settings with these bars with cool little arrow animations. And you can change the output and input device. 
hopefully with the display tab that can be fixed when you're hooked up to an external monitor and you can maybe change some of the display settings there but at the very least it will get fixed and not crash the system now going to disks and drives this is where i don't know if it's a typo or if it's meant to be this way but i find it odd to find the driver updates for windows and legion space updates in here but this is where you also find your ssd space usage and any other external drives hooked up to it so hopefully they can either make it a little bit more obvious that the drivers uh, updates are found in here because they are obviously quite important to the functionality of the device and it might not be as immediately obvious to some more novice users that aren't familiar with using all these devices and different uis and everything like that Going to general, we can see this is where you find the general settings of English, 24 hour clock settings, booting either automatically into Legion Space or not, as well as your power LED button settings. And if you want to limit your battery charging to 80% and screenshot settings, version settings for Lenovo's Legion Space. That kind of wraps it up for the settings tab. Again, the only really thing about this is that, yes, it is responsive going through these tabs. There's no doubt about it. But going into the settings tab, you can see it takes like a bit of a second there sometimes for the stats to reflect. It's actually being quite smooth this time around. And there it didn't even change. It didn't even need to reload. So moving over to the controls tab, we can see very similar that there's a nice cool graphic similar to the settings tab. It shows the connected controller's battery charge level as well as the version, uh, the left and right side of the screen there. Going down to button mapping, this is where you can change the gamepad modes and FPS modes as well for custom game settings. So if you want to go into your view and edit layout, you can remap all of your controls here. And going down to something like the left stick, you can change it to certain settings, but you can't change it like the buttons where you can do certain key combos so if you see here going up to the top you can change it to up to five key combo settings as well as the numpad keyboard mouse and controller settings unfortunately you still can't remap the legion l and r button however you can remap the menu and view button it seems but not when <laughs> they are set to either or so basically if they are set to the traditional or swap method whatever the legion l and r button you won't be able to remap those now going to the rear view you see a cool nice little animation there which is nice and snappy again there's not really any lag or delay to it it doesn't slow down the system and again this is where you can change the macro buttons on the back as well as the traditional bumper and trigger settings here and you can do the same customization for those as well now going back to the main menu of this one we can see it's very very similar for fps mode whether you hate it or love it it's there for people that use it and i'm sure people will appreciate having the nice clean layout and same customizability options for the device and FPS mode there. Going back out to the main controller setting menu, we can see going to joystick lighting. This is where actually one of the coolest and biggest changes is in my opinion, because although there isn't any more lighting profiles or effects added, there is a nice effect added to the UI in relation to whatever you have it set to when it's set to solid and blinking. When you have it set to dynamic or spiral, it'll set the UI color to its default Lenovo Legion teal green now that they have. However, when you change it to solid or blinking, whenever you change it to whatever custom RGB you want for the joysticks it will reflect that now in the accent lighting for the UI in Legion Space and the flyout menu as well super cool touch and it's honestly a big win for just personalization of devices especially for people that don't like using the LED think it's too flashy think it's a waste on the battery or anything like that this is just a nice way to reflect your personality on your device a little bit more Going to your joystick settings and trigger settings, they're very similar, very simple. This is where you can set your dead zone sensitivity for the joysticks, and it will be reflected with the graph there, as well as trigger settings. You can set the start and end points. Now, for those, I would like to be able to see how and where my joystick is placed when I'm moving the joystick, because currently it doesn't do anything. You can change the joystick sensitivity as well here, but again, there's no feedback as to what is happening other than, yes, okay, here it is at this point, and it, there's no live feedback to what you're using on the controller. Hopefully something like that could be worked on or added on, as I think that would be a nice feature to have within the software itself. Finally, going to the More tab, we can see that this is where they just throw in everything else with the controller updates. You can test your input. It's just a yes-no method. It doesn't show, again, where the exact points are on the triggers or joysticks. You can enable your gyro behavior here. You can enable or disable the touchpad, controller vibration, and show things like your controller battery status. With all that out of the way, there's not really much else to it. If you go into the flyout menu, the flyout menu is very much the same as before, except, again, the UI changes are just reflected 
reflected with that with the new styling the new text styling and the accent color changes so again you can't see the power save in g anymore so it's just a big rip off in my opinion you should never update to this update but if you're into it you can see that we do have the custom tvp settings still custom fan speed control or full fan speed control as well as your fps limiter if you would like to enable it or disable it and then going to the general tab, same as before, you change your display refresh, resolution, all of that. Going to the one below that is the controller settings where you can change your lighting effects. Here's the lighting effects changing the accent color of the UI here. Going to the system quick settings, there's nothing new added here. It's just quick shortcuts for Windows settings, productivity mode, and help menus remain the exact same. Finally, the one last thing is that the only way you do control the power settings from Legion Space is through the flyout menu at the bottom there, and that will allow you to do sleep, restart, shutdown, and exit Legion Space itself. Beyond all that though, those are kind of all the changes that have happened and this is obviously a big update. I don't want to put anyone down. I don't mean to say, oh, okay, like there was this buggy experience that I had. This isn't what this is about. This is just to show, hey, these are what's to expect in the next upcoming Legion Space update, hopefully sooner rather than later. I can't give you exact timing on when it's going to happen, but hopefully again, sooner rather than later. If there's things that you like in this or things that you wish you would could see in this or that uh, they would change in this or add features, please let me know in the comments and let Lenovo know as well. And then hopefully together we can form a better Legion space and Lenovo Legion Go device. Finally, I just want to give one shout out to my eBay auction that I have for Lost Boys Hope. It's a local uh, dog rescue organization that I volunteer for. They have unexpected medical bills all the time, but more recently. And I am just running a charity auction of some items. Nothing big, nothing hugely expensive or anything like that. But details will be found in the description below. If you're interested, feel free to check it out. 50% of whatever you spend will be guaranteed to go to the rescue, while the other 50% will go towards packing and shipping fees and everything and eBay costs. Whatever, if anything is left over from that additional 50%, it will be redonated or the remainder will be donated back to Lost Boys Hope. If that 50% balloons over, I'll just pay out of pocket for the shipping and things like that. But guaranteed, 50% of what you spend will be donated to Lost Boys Hope. So if you can, please check out their website. They do have direct donation options as well. Or, at the very least, check out local organizations close to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day.